Take three. I'm gonna sing a song about A time when James still had some clout He used to be pretty goddamn funny Till he had his kids and only cared about money There was a time before the slobs When James Rowe really liked his job These days he really tries to act mad He's the balding Nintendo dad He's the Soylent brand deal making dad I didn't have enough time to finish writing these words To say the quality of AVGN episodes has gone down dramatically over the years is pretty much beating a dead horse at this point. We all know it. We all see it. Everything wears out its welcome over time. But what I'd like to do tonight is take a look at some of my favorite AVGN episodes and highlight a time when I thought James Rolfe was more inspired, creative, and passionate. Stick around as I go through my top 11 favorite AVGN episodes and why 11? The numbers all go to 11. No, uh, this is actually isn't a Spinal Tap reference. I honestly couldn't boil it down to just 10, so I, it just happened to be 11. I could have just lied and said it was a Spinal Tap reference, but it isn't. This is Dancing with Ghosts. So when combing through all 200 plus episodes of AVGN to find the episodes that resonated with me the most, I found that it all boiled down to the subject of the video and less of the nerd character. Bizarre and obscure games, consoles, and peripherals was when James was at his best in my opinion. Although there were some moments when the nerd character really shined, especially given all the garbage quality content that was on YouTube at that time many years ago. So without further ado, here we go. I had always heard about these weird add-ons as a kid, but I had no clue as to what they were or if I should go put them on my Christmas wish list. There were no exclusive must-have game titles for these add-ons, and honestly, we were a Nintendo family, so we didn't even own a Genesis. So when the nerd showcased what these add-ons were and the mostly shitty titles that were made for these peripherals, it had all the ingredients for an entertaining watch. Especially when showing all that was involved in hooking up the 32X and the Sega CD and all of the power outlets you would need just to run. James did some interesting filming techniques in this video, like when he used a lower frame rate to simulate a Sega FMV cutscene. I also believe the Sega CD video introduced the famous Night Trap to many of the younger viewers, myself included. It was also through watching these old nerd episodes that I think pop culture learned about a lot of these things that are so common now. James really was an innovator in introducing the masses to these types of games and weird consoles. James also breezed past cheap joke premises in this video that I feel like he would have milked these days. For instance, when he says this. The teacher talks to you, you come up with answers. Should I say, oh, that was my frog horny. The frog's name is Horny? Road Avenger. Now, if this were a modern AVGN, he would have dragged this joke out for at least a solid minute, acting in an over-the-top, unfunny way and mugging for the camera. And this next joke would have never made the cut in a modern AVGN episode. This is a solid early AVGN video, just based on the subject matter alone, but I'm not gonna lie, if it weren't for the over-exaggerated acting in this video, it wouldn't have been nearly as entertaining. First of all, this was back when James could still act convincingly pissed off. The audio is even starting to clip a little bit because he's yelling so loudly. This is fucked beyond belief! It's like the controls in this game are like something you do for a cheat code, not a basic move that you have to do in order to play the game. Why they program it in such an asinine, ball brain, cockamamie, ridiculous fashion? This kind of youthful exuberance is usually lost after someone has done something over 200 times. But getting back to the episode, firstly, you gotta love James's Batman voice as he tells every video game, I'm Batman, as he tosses it aside. Well, this one gets the official bat stamp of shit. On to the next game, but first, gotta tell it I'm Batman. I'm Batman. 
I love the cheap ass Batman costume while and he's still got the nerd glasses on. It, it wouldn't be anything groundbreaking now, but watching this in the context of it being very early YouTube, the production and creativity was very high and novel at the time. But it was Mike Matei who stole the show with with his just completely over the top Joker impression. That's all the shitty Batman games I can take. Three is over. <laughs> Batman! Batman, you wanna play a really shitty Nintendo game, Batman? What how that return of the Joker on the Nintendo Entertainment System, yeah, Batman? I'm not really <laughs> Batman though. You're not Batman! Batman, you're Batman! I'm Batman! <laughs> He's taking the character and mockingly over-exaggerating how the Joker would typically be portrayed in the movies and cartoon series. Plus, hearing the Joker say, Motherfucker! Still gets me to this day because I'm thinking to myself, I know Joker is a dark character and all, but I don't believe he ever called Batman a motherfucker <laughs> in any of the movies. I'm dead. <laughs> Fuck you, motherfucker! So I tried again. It's not really that bad of a game in general. It just has some things about that oh, suck. Would so, you like to play a bad game, Batman? How no, about I the Game Boy version? Return of the Joker! <laughs> Have fun, motherfucker! I'm gonna shove these fucking games off your ass! Batman Revenge the Joker! <laughs> Batman Return of the Joker! <laughs> Batman Forever! <laughs> Batman Return of the Joker on Game Boy! <laughs> and last but not least, Batman on Commodore 64! <laughs> It was this kind of tongue-in-cheek silliness that really made this series appealing back in the day. This is a perfect example of what made a classic AVGN episode. First of all, I didn't know anything about the Philips CGI. I don't remember seeing it in stores, none of my friends had it, and in addition to it being a super obscure console, to learn there were Nintendo franchises on it really spiked my curiosity. James breaks down the history of the console and how Philips ended up acquiring the rights to Nintendo's IPs. And right before I thought I had missed out on some great Zelda hidden gems, he goes into the gameplay. Another nuisance is that I can't hit the Dodongos because the bombs just fly over them. If I could duck and throw the bomb, maybe I could hit him, but you can't do that because it activates the status screen. And I hate these damn snakes. Your timing has to be perfect. When I'm crouching, you can make me do the duck walk. Cool, huh? 14 years later. God, these games looked truly awful, and having James as a tour guide to break down just how awful they were was just a super novel concept. And again, this was all the way back in 2008 YouTube. People didn't really make shit like this back then. It's your mother. Now get your ass out of bed. I know you're there, John. John? I said, get up, get up, John. Get out of bed, John! Get out of bed! Yeah, great concept. Every game should begin with two minutes of some guy's mom trying to get him out of bed. Yet another example of an obscure game that set the groundwork for a classic nerd episode. Plumbers Don't Wear Ties was such a ridiculously cringy attempt at cashing in on the burgeoning console gaming market that started to come into prominence in the 90s. It was an added bonus that James was playing this game on the 3DO interactive multiplayer. Yet another obscure gaming console that was an abysmal failure. A console that I had no idea existed until watching this video. The script must have written itself for this episode. This game, if you even want to call it that, it looks so bad. This was less of a game and more of an interactive movie like Night Trap. But not even Night Trap could top the horrific acting and absolutely absurd concept of this video game. So let's go with the more interesting choice. happen to have a whip in handcuffs? Wow, I had no idea she'd actually do it. What kind of fucked up game is this? There were already many AVGN imitators at this point in time, but given the production value, game selection, and writing quality, the nerd still held firm as the top video game reviewer at the time. Though this game was released on the NES, James's admitted comfort zone, it was so obscure and ridiculous that 
again, the, the script must have written itself. Action 52 was a broken mess of a game that featured 52 titles that were all virtually unplayable. The suggested retail price was printed on the cartridge itself, and it was a funny observation that even though the price was high, it was actually a deal if you were getting 52 games. Seeing the frustration of James trying to navigate through all 52 of these games was very relatable, and even though you weren't playing the game, you could just feel the shittiness of these games just by the visuals and James explaining how bad the controls were. And you know what? The controls in all these games are so bad, I've forgotten that B is jump and A is attack. I've been playing for so long, I've sort of adapted to its crap factor. I swear, next time I play a regular platformer, I'm gonna try jumping with B. This video also spawned the Cheetah Men video, which was a classic in its own right. So again, what an interesting concept for a video. This was back when you never knew what to expect from AVGN videos, but you could usually expect quality. The Game Glitches video was not only interesting because we've all been there when a game glitches out and just leaves you high and dry with no resolution other than to restart the game. However, this video showed off games that were straight up broken out of the gate, like the Rocky video game for PlayStation 2. But to top off an already cool concept for a video game video, we get introduced to a character that would become a part of AVGN lore, the Glitch Gremlin, a character portrayed by Kevin Finn. Whether it was his acting or the voice modulation, I just loved watching this character and his smart-ass delight he would take in watching James attempt to play a game that just refused to boot up properly, hence causing all the glitches or whatever else that would happen. Daddy, do ya? How do you like that? Sip on a nice, cool bottle of glitch. Bing! A nice, comfy couch of pixelated glitch. 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 Bing! Bing! Glitch, glitch. Glitch, glitch, glitch. Bing! The Glitch Gremlin was a hilarious character, and it kind of sucks they weren't able to use him in any other videos. I've always been a huge fan of the 16-bit era, but especially the Super Nintendo. So when the nerd covered a game that had a mass release with this weird title, I was intrigued. Lester the Unlikely is a classic example of a nerd episode that was more bare bones, but it worked just based on how absolutely horrible this game was. Now that is the most embarrassing walk cycle mm. I've ever seen. Mm. No. What's he doing? What the hell is that about? Jump! Oh, what is he, humping the air now? Oh, come on, he can't even jump without getting hurt? Oh shit, there's birds now? Oh, duck! Oh no, 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 no! Let me go! Oh, I have to do the whole level all over again? This game is ass gravy. You had so much to work with, from the concept, to the move set to the gameplay. I couldn't believe a game this shitty would have ever been approved on an SNES console, but this was one of the reasons that kept me tuning in to Angry Video Game Nerd. In 2011, we find James not only talking about another NES game peripheral, but one that his offspring, Pat the NES Punk, had made a key sidekick in most of his videos. The difference, of course, was that James had superior creativity and joke writing skills at this point to make a Rob the Robot video vastly more entertaining than that of his contemporaries. Since the release of this episode, James cites it as one of his longest videos to edit and produce, but again, given the 2011 standards, this was still a damn impressive video. The nerd goes into all of the excruciating detail of actually hooking Rob up and making him functional, and honestly, after watching this, I can't believe Nintendo put this much R&D into something that was essentially a gimmick to sell consoles. Okay, so these are the gyros. In other words, spinning tops. They come with a spinner, which takes a D battery. On top of the four double A's you'll need for Rob. 
when you place a gyro on the spinner, it does just that. It spins. Man, does this thing spin. You can probably sharpen a pencil on it. Now this whole setup is like something Doc Brown or Pee Wee Herman would use. So this is how it works. When you want to control Rob, you press start. Now the screen flashes different colors, which somehow communicates with Rob through the sensors in his eyes. Creepy. And now we're finally ready to move that gate. The object of the game is simple. Professor Hector somehow got himself trapped in a room full of dynamite and dinosaurs. Man, he really fucked up. James Rolfe uses his extensive knowledge of independent filmmaking techniques to really take this series to the next level in this video. For a shitty little internet web series, this was really pushing the limits of what was possible and I believe inspired an entire generation of would-be game reviewers. So just a couple of months before the Angry Video Game Nerd movie came out, this video was released. Now, most people say the nerd movie killed the AVGN franchise, and uh, judging by my list here, I'm going in chronological order, there's only two other episodes after this one, so I'm starting to think people were right on the money with that assessment. So anyway, we have this Big Rigs off-the-road trucking game. This was an episode that I liked just based off of how broken this game was. And again, this script must have written itself. You have so much to work with here. This video was released just a few months before the official AVGN movie came out. And as I make this video, I truly understand the people who claim that the show started to tank after the movie because surprisingly, without me even thinking about it, most of my favorite nerd episodes were made before his movie came out, and given the attention to detail in all of these videos, a line of delineation can be made from when James gave a shit, and when James outsourced his character to other people who had no vision. Big Rigs was not an example of that, however. This was a great, more basic nerd episode that had really good material to work with. First of all, this game is beyond broken. It's almost a parody of how broken this game is, and James has plenty of material to work off of. Big Rigs is just a notoriously incomplete game that somehow made it into the market, and yet again, it's one of those rare or interesting or altogether obscure titles that I would have never known about had I not watched this video. These were the types of videos that kept me coming back to see what other crazy game the nerd might tear apart next. Now see, this is what the angry video game nerd movie should have been. Something along this line uh, would have had a chance of actually being good, I think. This episode was a break from the usual nerd episode, but in a refreshing way. The Polybius arcade game was a game that was said to be developed by the government and used as a way to test mind control techniques on unsuspecting gamers. This machine has been rumored to exist for decades now, and in this episode, the nerd character actually locates one, supposedly, in an arcade warehouse. So I'm at an arcade reseller right now, and uh, my instinct tells me not to reveal the location just yet until I can determine if this is the current resting place. Of Polybius. The episode is shot with this found footage style in certain parts, which gives the episode a fresh feel apart from your average AVGN episode. Day three, or whatever it is. Um, I have a high score, and I don't remember when I got the high score. At 35, 31, 1, 1, 5, 1. I, I just want to get that again. And once I, I do that, I'll call it quits. No, I won't. I'll just keep fucking playing because I can't, I can't stop playing this fucking game. Just look at it. No! Don't look at it! As you can probably imagine, the nerd slowly starts going insane from playing Polybius. This would have seriously made such a better concept for a nerd movie rather than the shit he ended up making in 2014. I would consider this a short film rather than a nerd episode even, just given the ambitiousness of the video and the lack of any actual gameplay footage, really. And then you have the location shots that are outside of the nerve nerd room. The nerve room. The only way to let me go is if I show the game. I, I, I have to. I have no choice. I can't stand this anymore. Just, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Just,
Number one, Earthbound 2018. To me, this was the last great episode of AVGN. You kind of had to have already played Earthbound to, I think, truly appreciate this video to its fullest extent. The nerd breaks this game down thoroughly and points out things that you may not have noticed while playing through the game. Earthbound truly is a bizarre experience when you sit back and think about it. There's no way to cover everything that happens in this game, but just to give you a taste of how unpredictable it is, let's just say you use a pencil eraser to erase a pencil, Ness rides on a Nessie-type creature on your SNES, you use zombie paper to catch zombies, like flypaper, so it makes perfect sense. You follow a hooker into a hotel room where a bunch of monsters gang up on you, you wake up in some weird room, you telepathically communicate with Jeff in a snowy land where he fights giant cavemen at Stonehenge and goes into a a lab where a scientist builds a spaceship, you fly around, crash into a graveyard, ending up in the same weird room, you get a carrot key to use on shadowy bunnies to enter a cave, there's a town where nobody talks unless you give them a book to overcome shyness, there's a guy who turns himself into a dungeon, you go inside him to get a submarine! I also, for some reason, always really enjoyed this scene in the video. To complete your trial, I am going to break your legs. You will lose the use of them. Do you accept this? Am I supposed to say yes? Oh, this ain't good! Then there's the scene where Ness and his crew are sent to the land in Ness's mind, and you're reminded of just how trippy and deep this game was for the time, and especially for a Nintendo game. But in the meantime, he's reunited with past characters, both friends and enemies. I still feel pain where you wounded me. Well, that makes you feel sad. This really is one of the most fascinating dream stages I've ever played in a game. There's so many interesting lines of dialogue that just makes me stop in my tracks, like this snowman from Ness's childhood. We had fun one snowy day. I melted, but I'm still real in your memory. And when Ness meets his younger self, this might be the most brilliant quote in the whole game. It's me. I'm you when you were younger. Hey, let's play ball. Do you prefer reading comics or playing games? What? You're busy? Pure gold. We have yet another bit where, and James loves doing this in his nerd videos, where he goes back to his past with a collage of green screen vomit, but I don't know, I actually kind of like the sequence. It uh, was entertaining to catch all the references from past episodes in the background. Hey nerd, I'm your younger self. Wanna play some E.T.? Fuck no! Oh, well, why so angry? Stop playing these games. They'll ruin your life. But games are fun. What happened to you? Also, keep in mind, this was before James Rolfe completely started phoning in episodes, so segments like these still had some charm. I don't know, I think just the combination of how good Earthbound is as a game and how well James did explaining the game and conveying the emotions that the player feels when playing this game just really made this episode stand out for me personally. So those were my 11 favorite AVGN episodes of all time. You know... Uh, making this video was pretty bittersweet because you saw like how great this character used to be and how far he's fallen in quality. I think if James had just retired the character somewhere around 2018 or 2019, there wouldn't be entire forums of people shitting on everything he does nowadays. The nerd character pays the bills for James, and that's fine, but... At least it used to be, like, good on top of being lucrative. I don't know what happened. I think it was a combination of a bunch of different things. Letting outside writers take over, James losing his passion, running out of original ideas, starting an awful cover band, introducing all this extra content nobody wanted just to sell brand deals, not managing time very well. These were definitely all pitfalls that took away from whatever magic AVGN episodes used to have. Anyway, let me know what are some of your top favorite episodes. And uh, I mean, I could have honestly chosen more for this list, but I wanted to keep it fairly concise and just boil it down to kind of the essential elements of what I liked about classic nerd episodes. Anyway, till next time, have a good rest of your night.